Okay, so what I'll do in this video is prove the product rule from the definition of derivatives. So I'm only going to prove the product rule, but it's a good exercise to also do uh, proofs for the quotient rules and other rules for differentiation. And in fact, all proofs are done in the textbook. Okay, so what is the claim that we're trying to prove? So by the way, mathematically, we would probably call that a theorem. So mathematicians are kind of interesting creatures. So one thing that they like to do is use fancy names to denote very simple things. I think it makes us feel kind of intelligent. So a theorem is really just a claim or a statement that we're going to prove, and we feel it's important enough that it deserves a fancy name. Okay, so what is the theorem? So it's just the product rule. So it's just the statement that the derivative of the product of two function is equal to f prime of x g of x plus f of x g prime of x. So what I want to do now is prove that so what this means is that I'm going to start from the definition of derivative and show that it implies that this rule here has to be satisfied. So let me first define a new function, capital H of x, as being just the product of my two functions. What I want to prove is that h prime of x is equal to the right hand side here. So let me start from the definition. So h prime of x is the limit h goes to 0 of h of x plus h, sorry, x plus h minus capital H of x divided by h. Now I can replace capital H by what it is, namely the product of the two functions. So I get f of x plus h g of x plus h minus f of x g of x, whole thing divided by h. And now I'll do a little trick, which is that I'll add a term and remove a term to bring this into a form which is closer to the right hand side of the product rule. Okay, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to add the term f of x plus h times g of x, or rather subtract this term and then add the exact same thing. So I'm really not changing anything here because all I've done is subtracting and adding the same term. Then I have the rest that is left whole thing here is divided by h. But now what I can do is bring these two terms together and factor out the f of x plus h. So what is left here is g of x plus h minus g of x over h. And then I'll do the exact same thing here for these two terms. What I'm going to factor out is g of x. I get g of x factored out, and then I have f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now you probably see where I'm going. This looks like a lot, a lot like the derivative of g, and this looks like the derivative of f. And in fact, that's exactly what happens. So I have the limit here of a sum of two terms, so this is just the sum of the limits. And for each term, I have the product of two terms, so the limit is going to be the product of the limits. So I end up with the first term being limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h times the limit as h goes to 0 of this thing here, which is g of x plus h minus g of x divided by h. And for the second term, I also get the product of two limits. Limit as h goes to 0 of g of x times the limit as h goes to 0 what remains, which is f of x plus h minus f of x, whole thing divided by h. Now you see what happens. Well, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h is actually just f of x. I can just set h to 0. That's because I'm assuming that the function is differentiable, which implies that it's continuous, so we'll see more about that in a few minutes. So I get f of x here. And then here, the limit here is really just the definition of g prime of x. So that's what I get. And from this term here, the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x is just g of x itself because it doesn't depend on h at all. So I get g of x. And this is the definition of the derivative of f. So this is what I get, which is exactly the right-hand side here. So what I've proved is that the derivative of capital H, which is really the derivative of the product here, is equal to this expression here, which is exactly the right-hand side here. So in mathematics, when we finish the proof, we like to put a little square here, which just means that we're happy and we've finished the proof.